During Black History Month, we honor the legacy of Father Boniface Hardin, the founder and former president of Martin University. As an ordained Roman Catholic priest and civil rights advocate, he played a vital role in providing higher education opportunities for African Americans. Join us in celebrating the contributions of Father Hardin and the enduring impact of Martin University during Black History Month. Good morning and happy Friday. Welcome to Let's Talk Live with Martin Yu, the live podcast bringing much needed community conversations to the table. Let's Talk Live with Martin Yu is an exciting, reverent, and educational podcast that digs deep into current topics, community involvement, and stories of our alumni success that only Martin University can deliver. I am Antia King and joining me today is John Bonner Neighborhood Center's Director of Workforce Development and Financial Stability, Ms. Karen Sloan. Thank you for joining me this morning. Good morning, Antia. Thank you for having me. So let's get right into the podcast and let's see who you are and what you do. Okay. So um, as you mentioned, my name is Karen Sloan. I am the Director of Workforce Development and Financial Stability with the John Bonner Neighborhood Centers. Um, We are located at 2236 East 10th Street, so we are a pillar of the community um, for the east side. Um, Our goal is to assist individuals who are coming through our doors to be better off um, than when they entered into our doors, either uh, from an educational standpoint, employment, or financial stability or housing, um, we offer a number of programs where we service the community to help in emergency situations such as utility payments, um, rental payments. Um, We also um, provide those wraparound services as mentioned to help our community to um, earn certifications that then lead to uh, employment Uh, We help individuals to uh, learn how to save, decrease debt, um, and we offer programs that help them also to increase assets, which then has an impact on their um, net income and net uh, worth. It's a lot, but, you know, it's it's very helpful to the community. Um, It's been here. John Bonner was established in 1977, so... Um, you know, we've been here. (laughs) Yeah, y'all have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you about your background a little bit and how Mm -hmm. it brought you into your current role as Mm -hmm. Director of Workforce Development and Financial Stability, Mm -hmm. just so we can get a little bit of insight on what brought you to the Bonner Neighborhood Center. Great. That is an awesome question. Um, so, Antia, believe it or not, I um, actually used to work for Martin University. So, my previous background is actually um, in higher education. Um, and I actually worked with Marion University. So, typically, I would work with an adult population. Um, but the students that I worked with being in that population also. Um, had other needs, um, those needs that are not accomplished through education. I have worked with students who had difficulty paying bills or um, buying food or helping their kids get through school. So um, I am used to working in an environment where it's focused on a client that um, needs a little bit more of assistance. So. I have a heart um, and it's kind of in my wheelhouse and in my passion to help. Um, Although my background is in higher education, I still would volunteer. Um, I've worked at a nonprofit um, part time as an interim executive director when there was a transition of leadership. I've also served on nonprofit boards. Um, So I just uh, decided to match my career to my passion. And um, that's how I ended up here at the John Bonner Center. And And so I've been here for, it'll be two years in May. I'll celebrate my second year anniversary. Nice. I was just going to ask you, how long have you been 
at the Bonner Center. So that mm -hmm. is really, really cool. Um, being able to put your passion along with your career and just blend it all. That is kind of rare mm -hmm. nowadays in mm -hmm. this society. You kind of sometimes got to do what you got to do, but you're able to do it all, it sounds like. So that's really cool. Well, and it's full circle. So here I am back mm -hmm. in talking to education. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it that's matches. What I was thinking. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, my mom, she told me, she was like, yeah, Karen used to work at Martin. I was like, yep. even better, even yep. better. <laughs> yep. Yep. So you know how Martin University works. Then mm -hmm. You know that it is a non-traditional institution and it is a predominantly black institution, which means we want to target people within our community and help give them better opportunities. I want to see how your position in at the Bonner Neighborhood Center can become an asset or a resource to right. those that are currently at Martin University <laughs> there, you know, in need of that financial stability or employment. And I know Martin University, we have Martin Works now, which is a really great program for people to basically get an apprenticeship for right. certain organizations. But I also know that not everybody has the time to become part of an apprenticeship and raise children and work a full-time job and things of that nature. So how can uh, John Bonner Neighborhood Center become a resource and useful for people and students at Martin University? Well, <clears throat> I think you're spot on with <clears throat> when you're serving an adult population, um, it's more than just going back to school and education. You have to talk about how do I still contribute to the family? I still need to work. Um, while you're getting that education. So I think, you know, we actually are in the same community. So we, we really serve the same, um, same customer, right? I think the John Bonner Neighborhood Services, as your students or the students at uh, Martin University are matriculating through their education, you still have to kind of think ahead, what's next mm -hmm. after that? What's the career? Um, when I start earning more money, how do I budget that? How do I get rid of some of my debt? Because you're going back to school so that you can be in a better position. Mm -hmm. So the services that we offer here and the programs that we offer here would help the students at Martin University to plan for careers. We do career exploration. Um, we help with job searches. Um, we do mock interviews. We conduct a number of job fairs so that um, those students are able to interface with those potential future employers. Um, we make it a point to offer trainings that lead to credentials so that, you know, these could be um, things that students could work on like within six to eight weeks to earn a credential while they're still going to school, but then it puts them in a better position for maybe employment, right? Um, as far as financial coaching, it's never bad to, to, to budget. It's never bad to um, learn ways to decrease debt. Um, we also offer programs that help individuals to learn about home ownership. Um, we have programs that help individuals who want to establish uh, their own businesses. So we're here in the community to um, offer those type of things. And I think that would be an asset to the students at Martin University. And how long do these programs or these trainings last? Mm -hmm. I know everybody may or may not be on a time crunch, but it can give somebody a good idea on when they can possibly take part in this program, you know, oh, well, this is a six week or this is a 12 week. It makes a complete difference right. in yeah. what they can and can't do. So how long do these programs usually last? And that's a, that's a great point because the goal, whenever we're looking at a training, those are the things that we look at. How long is it? Typically there's six to eight weeks. And we, um, again, with the population in mind that we serve, we typically will um, try to get a training that's in the evening or in the morning so that there's some options for students who are coming through the particular training. Nice. What is one thing that you and your position look forward to most uh, in this new year? I know we're in February, we kind of got a little idea of what the year will look like in January, a little, you know, reset. How does it look for the Bonner Neighborhood Center going forward this year? What are the goals? Yeah. 
You know, it's interesting because as I mentioned, um, I'll celebrate my second year in May. And so when I first onboarded, we were still kind of in that coming out of COVID um, pandemic. Um, so now I see things maybe returning to some sort of a normal situation. Um, we have experienced an uptick in individuals who are participating in training, which is a good thing. Um, we are establishing um, more employer partners, which means it's going to benefit any of the our customers because we try to match the training to the needs of an employer. So having a training provider and an employer, a partner, we see that our students are completing our training and then immediately being hired. So um, partnership, getting our information out here with Martin University. Um, so I, um, I see some great things happening here in, in 2023. Yeah. I just heard you mention partnerships. Could you mm -hmm. share some of the partnerships that the Bonner Center has uh, sure. with the Indianapolis community, things like that? Sure. So one of our um, biggest employer partner is IU Health. Um, we also partner with um, Purposeful Design, which is also in our community. That is um, a great facility that it's an apprenticeship um, and they hire individuals who um, are just as involved. They hire individuals who have ex been experienced, have experience with addiction, homelessness. So they go through an apprenticeship to um, learn how to make furniture. They get paid and we partner with them to offer those wraparound services. We have a number of training providers that we use. Um, business as usual is one of our most recent um, training providers. And if you part, uh, for an individual who participates in that training, they are learning how to, and they are applying to become um, non-medical healthcare agencies. So that leads to, um, you know, owning your own own business. So those are some of our partners. But um, we partner with um, LISC, which is one of our biggest funders. We partner with. Um, the ICF Central Indiana Foundation. Um, so we have a number of, of partners that help us to complete this work. Nice. Is there anything at the Bonner Center that could help one um, build their credit or enhance their credit or just, you know, that type of education so they know what to do with their credit mm -hmm. and how it can grow if it's down mm -hmm. or just even start credit. I know that right now it's like a, it's a huge thing. Oh right. yeah. yeah. A major part of whether you get a car, if you get a home, if like credit right. just makes everything, yeah. everything. Yeah. Is there any type of program like that? Well, that would require an individual to um, be connected to a financial coach. Um, and if you know anyone who is interested in those services, it's just merely, um, you can either stop in um, and fill out an intake, or you can do it online at jbncenters.org. Um, and there's an intake form there. Um, they will add the form, you know, gathers a little bit of demographic information, and then you can select your primary interest. If someone is interested in financial coaching, they would select that. We receive that information, and then we connect with that. Uh, to get that um, process of counseling started and understanding their financial situation and what their goal is. What is one program that you oversee or you work through or anything that is like your baby that is like near and dear to your heart that you just, everything has to go smooth for you? <laughs> um, All of them. And I, I say that because one program does not work without the other, right? So um, our training program cannot work without having the financial piece to help the clients start understanding, you know, tax implications and things of that nature. Um, the financial coping piece would not necessarily work on its own if someone's struggling 
without, you know, they're not employed. So that would require coaching and training. So I would say all of the programs. <laughs> that answer. I know that's right. All of them. <laughs> Another question that I have would be, um, what else would you refer people towards, even if it's not within your uh, title for the Bonner Neighborhood Center? What would you, you know, how would you get them to come in to see what else you all provide? What other resources are provided? So we also, I mean, we have so many training programs. We have a second helpings program that helps individuals who is interested in culinary arts. They can go into training and, um, you know, be placed in restaurants and do internships. I mean, it just really is going to depend. We do so much. Um, we right now we have, this is a great point. I don't know why I didn't mention this before. Right now we have a tax, we are a tax site. So individuals um, can come in and have their taxes done for free. Um, they can call the Bonner Center and make an appointment or go online and make an appointment. And um, so that obviously is gonna end April the 18th. That's the, the most um, prominent thing that's occurring now since it's tax season. But we have a number of things. I mean, if you check out our website, um, again, that's jbncenters.org. We um, make sure that we update anything that's going on. Um, I know we have a huge career fair that's coming in May, um, so keep an eye out for that. Um, we'll have our third annual um, career fair with IU Health in August. And we typically at that point will do, uh, we have a health clinic where people who are uh, attending the health fair can also, you know, have some basic um, assessments done as far as uh, blood pressure, hypertension tests, things of that nature. So, um, yeah, just check out our website and um, we we accept everyone to come into the center. Even if, it, hey, if you say, let me come over and see what's going on. I want to take a tour. We'll be happy to do that as well. <laughs> what would you say to someone that may be a little bit on the fence or um, a little nervous to step into a place that provides so many resources or if they feel defeated, or anything like that, what would you say to them to recommend them and coming in anyways? You know, we, um, anyone who has expressed an interest in services um, attempt, it's, it's called the gateway to success orientation. And for a person that may be a little timid, that would be a great place to start because you're in a big room with other people who are coming in for services um our coaching staff actually creates a presentation and talks about all of the services that are offered through um the john bonner center um, and at the end of that if a person wants to then connect then there will be some privacy to work with one of the coaches to establish a future appointment nice i like that is there mm -hmm. anything else you'd like to share with the viewers right now about your position what you can do for them any other resources any events that you'd like to tell the people yes we are here to serve the community um and within my particular department we have a focus on increasing individuals employment skills um, and helping them to move forward in a financial way. Um, our message is if that you look at that um, collectively and take those small steps, because let's just face it, like you mentioned, sometimes it's hard to start something and know where to start. And even more with everything that you have going on to stick with the plan. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's very important once you establish um, your goal, because we don't we don't suggest a goal. What we do is we hear from the client and we establish a goal based on, around their personal desires. So if you stick with that, then you know there are definitely successes um, that be, can be gained. Um, again, we have a number of training programs that help individuals to move uh, forward. And even though it seems like it's a lot, uh, the John Bonner Neighborhood Center is a very welcoming center. Um, and a lot of individuals that we serve, a lot of us have been there. So we have that connection and 
relatability. And um, as I mentioned, most for me, it's a passion to help. And I would say that most individuals here at the John Butler Center have that same um, mentality. That is the culture. So it's a safe environment. Um, it's a welcoming environment. And we are here to serve. I love that. I thank you so much for joining me. I have one more announcement, guys, for watching. Um, there is an open house on March 3rd from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. And there will be vendors, on-site enrollment, once um, on-site financial aid assistance, food trucks, employers, community resources. And they will also be giving out 75 $1,000 scholarships. No registration required and it's open to everyone so be sure to get out to that open house on march 3rd from 2 p.m to 8 p.m um i thank you so much Ms. Karen Sloan, for joining me and the bonner neighborhood center that i know very very well and is near and dear to my heart as well uh, i know about everything that goes on <laughs> just about and all the resources and she is not lying when she says that it is open to everyone whenever um they are filled with resources if you just need any type of assistance. I know right now there's an energy assistance program. I'm mm -hmm. sure that ends in a couple of weeks, uh, but it's so many different things and so many different programs that people can apply themselves towards and it doesn't hurt to apply. The worst thing somebody can say is no. So make sure that you guys utilize the John Bonner Neighborhood Center because it's within our community. You don't have to go very far. Um, oh, did you want to mention the transportation as well? I know that that's a big thing to with the Bonner Neighborhood Center. Yes, and that, that's a part of, um, again, once a client comes through and we identify the needs, we provide bus passes, we provide um, gas cards. We're not going to just have you come in for training and send you on your way. We're going to evaluate the entire situation and make sure once you've completed the training or whatever the situation is that you are in a place that you can continue to to progress. So yes, we also can help with transportation for, um, you know, services. Yes. And that means they're only solution. They're only solution people. So if you come with a problem, they're going to have a solution. It's that's right. Like, oh, well, we don't know. We don't know what, we don't know what to tell you. See you later. You're going to have a solution. Right. So don't come to them if you're not ready for a solution, because that's all they're going to give you. How can somebody contact you? Um, the John Bonner uh, Center, you can contact us at 317-633-8210 or again through the website jbncenters.org. There's an intake form and once you fill that out, it's a very short, simple form. It will then be, um, you know, routed to the proper department for your to be contacted. Nice. Well, that looks like all the time that we have today, guys. I thank you so much, Ms. Karen Sloan, for joining me today and talking on Let's Talk Live, sharing your knowledge, your expertise, your resources with the Martin community. Uh, I can't thank you enough. Thank you so, so, thank so, so, you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Yes. And I'm your guest host, Antia King, and I'll see you same place, same time next week right here on Let's Talk Live with Martin. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Martin University has made a quality education accessible, applicable, and affordable by lowering tuition costs as much as 45%. I can earn my degree debt-free. The all-new Martin U. Register for spring classes now.